What is up guys, Saiyan7 here, and well, we got the next episode of the Let's Play. This is the first one since the updates come out, and well, what I want to talk about is defense and a lot of the mistakes that are made. Alright, the defense I'm using now is, well, it's the Diamond Defense, and it's for level town 15, uh, level 15 Town Hall. Now, is the Diamond Defense, you know, the, be the most effective defense for this level town hall? Yes, I think it is. I think once you get to level 14, um... The Diamond Defense at level 14, 15, 16 is definitely the most effective defense that I've come across. Now, the Death Box is good, um, but once you get to level 17, 18, I would say the Death Box and using what something I'm using similar to my main that has decoy buildings out there, and you'll notice that, well, in this defense right here, you're seeing these vaults in there. Now, I'm not putting the vaults in there to protect my gold. If you're familiar with the defenses that I generally use, I never care about protecting resources. But they're there because they have a lot of HP, and they will protect my towers and my heroes, giving me more time to kill the troops. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and run a wave of heroes monsters. And right now, I'm running deep with no garrisons. Now, all right, garrisons. You'll notice that, well, I have... No heroes in the towers. Why? Well, because when you put heroes in the towers, it those heroes gain experience. So if your heroes are all capped, well, you can step down a level and you can farm, well, without heroes in the garrisons. And you can see all my heroes, all five of them right there, will gain all the experience and split it just between them. Okay, one of the things you'll notice is in the Here Be Monsters, the heroes, the basically the heroes, the troops, they will always run all the way around and down and try to attack the vaults there, but they will never try to go through the wall. That's one of the things that you want in a defense. You do not want the enemy heroes or troops attacking your walls. Now, what's the best way to do that? Well, first off, you got to level your walls up. You'll notice that my walls are level 9 mostly, and if you're using, say, level 5, level 6 walls, the heroes... If they where they spawn right here, well, what's going to happen? They're going to go through the walls right there because it's not a lot of HP, takes no time. But if the walls are higher level, they're going to walk all the way around. And what those heroes are doing is they're trying to get to that tower because when they spawn right there, the closest thing to them, the closest thing to where any of the heroes spawn, they're going to try to attack, which is that tower right there. So if they spawn right here, they're going to try to attack that vault. And because of the walls, and you'll see that I have the walls that are three thick right there. Now, they're three thick right there, two thick right there, and then, you know, you'll see that it's one thick right there. And you'll see that that's because the farther they have to walk, the thicker the walls have to be. So, you'll see they spawned right there, right near where it's the two, three thick wall, and they're walking all the way around. Now, flyers. Flyers are a pain to deal with because they go right over the walls. The best way i found to deal with flyers is to use decoy buildings. The buildings that you're seeing, basically the vaults um, that are near the towers, the more buildings there, the more that you have to deal with the flyers. Now, it looks like I've frozen up a bit, and hopefully this will take care of itself. I should probably shut down like the 10 million different things that I'm having that sucking up bandwidth right now. Yeah, using a torrent downloader and Pandora and recording at the same time, not the best of ideas. All right, well, here we go. We got D4 coming in, and you'll notice they're... God, they're spawning right after that tower right now. All right, another thing you got to pay attention to is, well, you see how they're outside of the walls right there. Those troops are because they're ranged. They can reach that vault right there. That's one thing that, um, that I might change. You know, once I got to the level 15 town hall, well, I had 10 extra pieces of wall, and I expanded with those vaults, which, you know, so far, I like it, and it's something I'll probably play with a lot more um and it wasn't my idea it was actually a guild member's idea to use those vaults and i do like it but um all right well here you go here's wave d5 and one of the things that's changed in the update is the dinosaur has become harder and are we gonna get them are we gonna get them i believe so because yep there we go and you'll notice that i'm using a level 79 um thunder god instead of level 100 well that's because the level 79 thunder god he's got a good talent he has a four or five revitalize and i'm using him over the other one. Alright, well now I'm going to put garrisons in there and try to step up a wave. Alright, so when I'm choosing the garrisons, you're going to want, if you're really wanting to go as far as you can in Here Be Monsters, you're going to want to level Ordinaries. Why? Well, when you hit Info on the Ordinaries, what you're going to see is what they do is they add range, but also, right there, that's that's the big one. An upgraded version of level 10 basic, uh, of basic tower. And what do, they, what do they do? Well, they prioritize heroes right there. They're going to prioritize heroes, and they're going to add that extra range. You can see that plus six. 
See the see the circle? You can see that circle right there. You can switch it and switch it. Look at the difference in the size of range by putting the garrison in there. That's huge. That means all that stuff is protected. So let's go ahead and, well, let's get garrisons in for as much as I can. Now, I only have three garrison setups. And another advantage of having, you know, heroes that are higher level in the garrisons is they add might. And if you're curious just what one individual hero, what, how much might they add, wow, this is, this is bad. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my ISP right now, but whenever it slows down like this, it is 100% of the time, it is my ISP. Something, you know, basically my internet connection. All right, well, when you want to see one hero, take a look, and you can, right there, um, that's actually the hero base, which I'll get to in just a second, but right there, you can see that Snowzilla 97 adds 684 might. Now, the amount of might per hero is fact it's factored in on the level, the ability level, and what talent they have in the, you know, or not what talent they have, but the, the level of talent. And we'll take a look at the Snowzilla right here, which I just rolled that 2 of 5 revive, which revives a good talent, um, especially for boss, tier 3, because he just kills everything. But you'll see it's a 3 of 9, 97, and, well, that's a decent amount of might. All right, let's go ahead and get these, these towers. Um, next thing that I'm going to put in the tower, you're going to see that, well, legendaries. And what do they do? They add damage. You see right here that a level 2, it does twice the damage. So that's 1,420 damage. That's big. That's huge. Especially, think about it. It's targeting one hero. And it's going to target that hero until it either kills it or the hero gets out of its range. So that's going to be a lot faster towards killing the hero. And you see the next level, it goes up to 2.5. And it goes up 0.5 um, every, every time you level it up, you know, uh, from 1 to 2 to 3. And if you're curious about what it takes to get a hero up to the next level, well, the quickest way is to head on over into your altar and move that ability level from, right there you're gonna see Succubus, one of nine, but she's level 60. If I level that ability up, I'm gonna get a big boost, and if I have the shards to do it, I'll do it right now, but you're gonna see right now Succubus only adds 61 because that's her levels plus, plus one. Um, well, we're gonna head over here and let's see how many shards I have and if I can by one, yes, I can absolutely do that. So let's go ahead and just get her up one ability level. You're gonna see what it's gonna do. So we're gonna need 1800, then two for 2000, because that's what she's gonna take to get up. And let's go ahead and consume those slimes that we just purchased. There we go, 2000. And let's take a look at what she does in that tower now. You'll see that she does 96. Now, if you wanna get to a level two, basically 140, um, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to have a hero and have that ability level. You're going to have to have it up to 2 and the hero level up to 50. So a level 50 hero with an ability level of 2 will get you a 2 of 5. You know, basically a 2 on your towers. And that's pretty useful and that's actually not really hard to do, especially with ordinary heroes. That to get their ability level to 2, it doesn't take nearly as many um, experience points. Because you can see right there, going up to... That would be what? A 4 of 9 is only 15,000, which that's half of what it takes to get a legendary up there. So, And the same thing goes for elites, and I actually don't have an elite on this account right now, um, which I'll get into that in just a second. But what an elite does is adds HP to your towers, which is is a pretty big boost. Now, different... Um, different types of towers there are different bonuses and i can get into that in a, a later episode but i'm going to go ahead and just get these towers in and get it here be monsters wave started or this video will never end all right so there we go and you'll see i have a level 20 guy in there right now and well i would love to get at least some you know some boost for him so what does he need to get up well only basically only a thousand and i'm going to go ahead and buy some slimes with that so here we go and with a thousand grab him and i think i need three of these little guys and we'll have basically range towers that are going to focus on heroes every time. And I don't know if I bought enough or not, but we'll find out in just a second. It looks like I did. All right, where is he? Go ahead and consume these right here. And boom, 1,000. Now let's go ahead and take a look, and you're going to see that... Oh, it's lit up. It's a level 1. All right. And I know to get him to a level 2 there, I'm going to need a, a level 50 and that ability up to 3 of 9, which I'm not there yet, so I'm just going to hold off on that one. 
and we're going to leave the towers the way they are. You can see that I've got purple and I've got green, which blues are actually very effective in Here Be Monsters because it adds HP. And that's really, when you're looking at this, towers, that's why they're great. You can see 32,000 HP for that tower. And that means when the heroes spawn over here, they walk all the way around, they got to they gotta hit all of that 32,000. And what the blues do is they add a percentage of HP to that so you can get it up to, you know, 36,000, 38,000, 40,000, whatever it is. All right, well, let's go ahead and start the Here Be Monster Wave. We're going to go ahead and move to E. And one of the things is it is harder to form, you know, the same level that you were farming previously, whether it be D or E. And if you're not noticing this, it's probably because you have a lot of cushion in the wave of Here Be Monsters that you are farming. I know that on my main with, you know, all five heroes out there, no garrisons, G is pretty much the same. Now, when I step down to four heroes and I try to do four heroes, no garrisons on my main, I'm having problems. On this account... I'm having issues farming this with basically the same hero setup that I had in the previous Let's Play where I was farming E pretty easily. And now look at those towers. Look, at they're just taking him down. No chance. Boom. All over. E1's taken care of. Basically, the middle of my defense hasn't been touched. Now, when you're spreading the buildings out around the outside, you know, something where you can take advantage of the tower. So the things are in range, but they can't be close enough to where your heroes are going to come out and jump outside, way outside, and that can cause your heroes to take aggro and die. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the town hall up for the next Here Be Monsters run, which will be the last one, and show you some common mistakes that are made. All right, you can see they're hitting that tower right there, but because the tower has a lot of HP, it's still there. It's still going to be doing damage, and it's still going to be there to basically tank before my heroes get hit. All right, and then they're going to spawn over there. First thing they're going to target the closest tower unless well unless they're the tier three troops the last troop over tier four whatever the fourth troop over they target towers only so these guys are going to walk all the way around there into there so really not worried about them and what you're going to notice here is look at the towers they are targeting the hero they will target the hero until the hero dies or it gets out of range and there it is they're just there's two heroes gone now and they're going after the third and you'll notice oh she's got revive on her and you'll notice that, well, they targeted a different hero because she died and came back to life. That's one of the things that Revive will do is it'll take aggro off a hero. And because they had to hit all those walls and come all the way around, you see, they're not doing any damage to the stuff I have in the middle. That's the advantage of having the towers with the green and the purple in them. It is really great for killing things. The blues, well, it keeps your towers alive. And they're the flyers right there. They're going to come right over there. And that decoy building, that right there, that vault right there, those flyers are hitting that instead of my tower, which is going to give me more time for my tower to stay alive. And you can see that the heroes are walking all the way around because where they spawned was that. You know, they'll never get there, basically. I'm going to get through that wave every time. All right, here's E5, and hopefully we get a good spawn. This is actually probably the worst spawn I could have got because the first thing they're going to target, I believe, is that tower, which is low. When they finish that tower... Since they have heroes already hitting on them, they're prob up. Oh, they went after the vault, which was weakened anyways. They're probably going to go after my heroes, which is the last thing I want. But this is when you know hero level really comes into effect. And are we going to get it? Yeah, looks like we are. All right. So after this one, I'm going to go ahead and just change the defense just slightly and show you what happens and some of the mistakes you might be making and some of the improvements you can do to counter those mistakes. All right. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move walls. And I'm going to take these and I'm going to move these out here and show you what happens when your walls are too thin. Because you don't want them attacking walls. You do not want those heroes to attack the walls ever. Because what it's going to do is it's going, it's going to give them way more time to take down that building, that building, whatever it is when they, when they come through that wall and then kill your heroes. So I'm going to go ahead and move those. And then I'm going to go ahead and start the same wave and I'm going to show you what happens when your defense basically is not as good as it could be. And I'm just putting these walls out there just randomly, so they really aren't going to be affecting anything other than now, well, I'm not protected very well. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another mistake that is made, and I know I've made it in the past. I'm going to put buildings way too close to an opening to get my heroes to come way too far out and they're going to pick up aggro. What I'm looking for is a, a decent HP building that's actually going to cause some problems here and I might have to move some things around. There we go, just move that. And see, I'm going to put this all the way right here and I'm going to move another one. I'm basically going to use all four spots with that. And yeah, well, it seems like, yeah, I'm protecting my mana more, but what I'm doing is I'm screwing myself on Here Be Monsters and you'll see what happens when they do spawn or spawn near that or come over there, well, they're going to end up 
getting aggro on my heroes and killing them. So these are some of the mistakes, and I'll show and just in a second once we get this over here, show you what happens when they are right there. And another problem you might have is a building too close to the wall. And we're gonna go ahead and just move this town hall in here, and you'll see that I'm gonna just go ahead and put it right up against the wall. And what's gonna happen is range troops are gonna attack it before they even go through the wall. Just basically putting, that's wasting a building. All right, so let's go ahead and start the same level. And this is a bad version of the diamond is what you're seeing right here. These are mistakes. So, well, the buildings are still around there and you're gonna see, well, they're gonna target that. And basically they're gonna go into the middle. Another thing you'll notice my heroes are jumping over the wall. That's one of the adjustments that I do want to make on this defense is you really don't want your heroes jumping over walls. You want them running around walls. Now, they're not going through those walls just yet because, well, the buildings that are out there, they're funneling the heroes around as they kill one building. The closest thing that's next to them is the next building, so they'll move around. So if I get another spawn there, they're going to break that wall, and that's going to be bad. All right, so we got the next spawn that's over here, which those buildings are going to spread them out around, you know, funnel them around. That's another thing that buildings can be used for is, you know, funneling the heroes. And you can see right there, one of their heroes, two of their heroes, they're going through that. Um, he's trying to go through that wall to hit that. The ranged heroes, well, they're hitting that town hall, and I've got nothing to protect them until basically I kill all of their heroes. And you can see my AC just died. He died because I had a building out there. He jumped out there and took aggro next right after that mana vault was was destroyed so if i didn't have the mana vault there i'd still have an ac all right well we're gonna go to e3 and as the waves progress in difficulty well i'm gonna start losing more heroes because i don't have the buildings around to funnel them all right now here's the spawn that's gonna kill me i might get past it but i'm not gonna get past it well you can see that they're breaking through the wall and as soon as they get through well I'm going to be in trouble because they're going to destroy that vault pretty quickly because what you want is them running all the way around and having your heroes have all day to swing away on them. You can see that the next thing they're going to attack, well, it was druid and my druid's gone. And that's because my walls were too thin. So you got to make and you got to make sure you have the walls the correct thickness. So, you know, two layers, three layers, one layer and the higher level level your wall is, you know, the more you can get away with using two layers versus three layers. So make sure you level those walls up. All right, well, E4, and I probably, I might get past it, might not, but I definitely won't be getting past E5 because, well, all of the design flaws in a base. Now, I have so many people that are asking me, well, hey, is this base good? Guys, I don't know. I can't tell if a base is good unless I test it, you know, you know, there's some obvious flaws, but when it comes to just, you know, little tweaks here and there, the best thing to do is do a round of Hero Monsters, watch it, and keep in mind the things that I've talked about in this video, and see, you know, how their troops are moving, what they're attacking, you know, are your heroes taking aggro, because you'll notice my heroes are almost dead. Most of the rounds of Hero Monsters you've seen on my channel, my heroes don't get hit very often, because the defense is set up correctly for the enemy troops to run around it. All right, and here is E5. This is going to end this video, and it's going to end my day in this round. I am not going to win. I have no chance, all simply because of design flaws. Just a few walls moved, and the buildings moved. Every piece of wall, every building inside the center here is extremely important in how you set it up. It will make the difference between failing or beating a Hero Monsters round. One more point I want to emphasize that basically eight, nine out of ten people that are having problem with the wave with and do have the correct defensive setup is their hero bases are not leveled. Level your hero bases up to 13 as soon as possible. You'll notice that I have all my bases either 13 or on their way and when you take a look at it, 26% bonus. That's huge guys. Plus the range goes up. And that range, just like a tower, you can see that circle right there. That's where they attack. It's you. It, you might think, oh well, I don't want them running out that far. Yes, you do. You just need to move your building so they don't run out in the inappropriate ways. All right. So that hero base, that plus twenty six percent. Let's just go ahead and take a look at some stats, and you'll see that Thunder God, you know, basically that twenty two hundred. You're going to be adding. Um, this is going to be some mental math, and it's not my strongest suit. So let's uh, see what's going to be uh, 550, base about 550 um, that it's going to add. So he's going to be hitting for you know 27, 40 something, and that's pretty good. But when you add as well, boom, he's going to proc 
for 260% on top of that, that's when he really starts hitting hard and things start going down quickly, and that's because of hero bases. One more thing about hero bases is Druid. He heals for 220% of his attack right there that 1935 so we'll you know basically add you know 26 percent to that so that's huge you know he's going to be healing for what another i don't know three four hundred probably 400 and change something like that um like i said mental calculations on the fly aren't my strong suit so you know that's the important of hero bases guys level them up if your hero bases are not leveled up Get them up as quickly as possible, and I would say that they are as important, if not more important, than the level of your towers. Also, make sure to keep your town hall leveling up, because it takes so long. You'll see right there, it's got a whole day, but it's worth it for the extra walls to move up. Alright guys, that's it for this Let's Play. Hopefully you learned a little bit about base defense, and you can get past that next wave of Hero Monsters. Alright guys, Sand7 out.